Hi, I'm Adil Habib and I'm a lawyer at KPA Lawyers in Mississauga. In this video, we'll be discussing a little bit about how construction liens work in Ontario. For homeowners, we'll be answering questions like what happens if I renovate my home but haven't provided my contractor with full payment. For contractors, we'll be looking at the other side of the equation where you haven't been paid for renovations that you've performed. We've made this video in a way that we hope will be relatively straightforward and easy to understand whether or not you have any experience in construction, real estate or knowledge of the law. Even if you're a construction lawyer, or you're just getting started in your career, you'll find some useful information in this video. First, let's start off by explaining what a construction lien is. In Ontario, a construction lien is a legal claim for payment for goods or services that have been supplied to improve a property. This is sometimes called a builder's lien or a mechanic's lien in other provinces in Canada. The idea here is that a person who supplies services or materials to improve real estate is entitled to a lien against the premises that they worked on. The person who is owed the money in a construction lien is called the lien claimant. The monetary value of the lien is an amount equal to the price of the services or materials. As long as services or materials were provided, it doesn't really matter if the services or materials were provided directly to the owner or to a contractor or even a subcontractor. A construction lien is a pretty serious legal tool because it typically gets registered on title to real estate. It's okay if you haven't heard the expression registered on title. What that basically means is the lien will be saved in a government record where it will be publicly visible to anyone that wants information about that property. More importantly, if a particular piece of real estate is purchased or sold while a lien is registered on title, some or all of the money in the transaction will be used to pay the lien claimant, whether or not the buyer or seller wants that to happen. Having a construction lien registered against the property can also create other disruptions in a homeowner's life. For example, if you have a home equity line of credit, it is very common for banks to freeze your line of credit when they discover that a lien has been registered against your real estate. Keep in mind that homeowners Owners making a payment for a home improvement are required to retain or hold back 10% of the amount owed until all potential liens have expired or been satisfied, discharged, or vacated by payment into court. We'll explain what those terms mean a little bit later in this video. But for now, it's important to keep in mind that the holdback obligation extends to every level in the construction pyramid. Or in other words, it applies to all contractors and subcontractors involved in the project. So basically, Basically what that means is the owner must hold back 10% of the amount owed to the contractor who in turn holds back 10% owed to the subcontractor, all the way down to the bottom of the pyramid. As you've probably noticed in this point in the video, construction law in Ontario can get fairly technical compared to other areas of law. In fact, we're just getting started. There are many strict deadlines and requirements that must be followed. There are many pitfalls and common slip-ups that even lawyers will occasionally struggle with when it comes to construction law. Since failing to follow these very specific rules and requirements can result in serious consequences for both contractors and homeowners, we're going to spend some time talking about these rules. We're going to quickly mention a couple of legal terms so you can understand some of the deadlines that are involved. Liens must first be preserved, then perfected. Let's talk about what it means to first preserve a lien. Just because someone provided goods or services to improve a property does not mean that they're allowed to wait around forever to exercise their right to make a claim for a lien. Preserving a lien is exactly what it sounds like, in the sense that it avoids the expiration of a lien claimant's rights. If the lien claimant is registering a lien on title to the home, then the lien may be preserved by making a registration in the relevant land registry office. This is usually done online by a lawyer. If the lien claimant is not registering the lien on title, then the lien may be preserved by simply giving the homeowner a copy of the claim for lien, which is a formal legal document. Like we mentioned, there are important deadlines involved here. A lien must be preserved within 60 days of the publication of something called a certificate of substantial performance, or within 60 days that the contract is complete or abandoned, whichever is earlier. A construction project is considered to be substantially performed when both of the following criteria are met. First, the home improvement is being used or ready to be used. And second, the cost to complete the project is less than the following. 3% of the first $1 million, 2% of the next $1 million, and 1% of any balance remaining. Certifying that a project has been substantially performed can allow for the release of holdback, even where some 
some work remains to complete the project. The rules governing the Certificate of Substantial Performance can be found at Section 32 of Ontario's Construction Act. It's important to keep in mind that a Certificate of Substantial Performance has no effect until a copy is published in a construction trade newspaper. A construction trade newspaper is a newspaper that meets the following four requirements. First, it's published in either paper format or electronic format with circulation generally throughout Ontario. Second, it is published at least daily on all days other than Saturdays or holidays. Third, calls for tender on construction contracts are customarily published. And fourth, it is primarily devoted to the publication of matters of concern to the construction industry. If a newspaper meets those four requirements, it will be considered a construction trade newspaper. All right, so whether you're a contractor or a homeowner, you're gonna wanna know if the lien was preserved correctly. So for now, let's presume that it has been preserved properly and move on to the next step. The next step is called perfecting the lien. But what does this mean? A preserved lien will expire unless perfected before the end of the 90th day following the last day on which it could have been preserved. The clock doesn't start from the actual date that it was preserved, but is related to the same triggering event, giving rise to the preservation requirement. That might sound a little confusing, so we'll use an example. For example, if the triggering event was a publication of a certificate of substantial performance and the lien was preserved 10 days after publication, the lien must be perfected within 140 days of being preserved, which is 150 days after publication, the triggering event. Where the lien attaches to the premises, contractors must also register a certificate of action on title. In other words, this means that the lien claimant must start a lawsuit against the homeowner, which is usually done through a construction lawyer. After the lawsuit has been commenced, the certificate of action can be created and registered on title. The certificate of action is a very specific legal form and it must be issued by the court registrar. This can be a procedurally delicate process, so it's very important to use a construction lawyer that knows what they're doing. If the lien attaches to the land, but the owner has posted monetary security and obtained a court order removing the lien from the real estate title, then the certificate of action is no longer required. The 90-day perfection deadline only applies to the following. First, contracts or procurement processes started on or after July 1st, 2018. And second, contracts or procurement processes on or after December 6, 2018, where the premises was subject to a lease that predates July 1, 2018. Prior to the changes in the law, the deadline to perfect was 45 days from the last date that the lien could have been preserved, and this deadline still applies to contracts predating the update of the law. If you are uncertain as to whether the previous or current deadline applies, the best practice is to operate on the assumption that you only have 45 days to perfect the claim. It's important to keep in mind that a preserved lien can be perfected without the necessities of any other steps being taken by a process called sheltering. This concept is a little bit more advanced and beyond the scope of this video. If you have questions about sheltering a lien, feel free to reach out to us for an appointment. Now let's move on to how a lien can be removed from the title of a piece of real estate. Removing a lien is always of particular importance to homeowners. After all, homeowners don't want that kind of headache attached to their real estate. It's important to understand that there's a difference between vacating a lien and discharging a lien. Vacating a lien involves removing a lien from title of a particular real estate property, usually by offering up some monetary security to the lien claimant. In other words, money. A lien may also be vacated where there's an error. In the original registration, to allow a lien claimant to register a correct lien, provided that the time for preservation has not expired. Posting security and vacating a lien may be necessary in landlord and tenant relationships, where a sale of land is in progress or the terms of the construction financing require that title remain free and clear. Vacating a lien does not end the lawsuit relating to the lien. The court case continues as before, except for the following. One, the lien claimant doesn't get to force the sale of the land. Two, the security charge is now against the money that was put up rather than the land itself. And three, a certificate of action is no longer required to perfect the lien. Basically, it is simply the registration from title that's being removed. The lien claim still technically exists, but the lien is considered to be a charge on the monetary security that was posted. We know that a lot of this sounds a bit technical, but the idea here is that vacating a lien frees up a homeowner's right to their land.
land. As we mentioned, this requires a homeowner to post some money. So it's important to understand the acceptable forms of payment. One, you can make payment into court by certified check or bank draft. Two, the homeowner can also use the deposit of an irrevocable letter of credit in a specifically prescribed format from a recognized chartered bank. Or three, a homeowner can post a guarantee bond. Now, many homeowners may dispute the legitimacy of a contractor's claim, and they might not be willing or able to post any kind of monetary security. That's why we should mention that homeowners that have liens placed against their property and lawsuits filed against them have a right to defend that lawsuit and make the case that they should not be liable for payment. Ultimately, the case will be decided by a judge like any other lawsuit. Let's get back to vacating lien. It's important to keep in mind that a court order is required to vacate a lien. This means that a lawyer will have to bring a motion that may be brought in front of a judge without the involvement of the other party. This is called an ex parte motion, which simply means that the other party's involvement is not necessary. If the monetary security posted by the homeowner is for the full value of the lien plus the lesser of $250,000 or 25% of the lien, then you are almost guaranteed to receive that court order vacating the lien from the judge. A judge or a master, which is a type of judge, can decide to vacate a lien even if a lesser amount of money is posted where it is reasonable to do so. However, in those cases, you cannot proceed with such a motion without at least notifying the other party about the motion. In other words, the homeowner cannot bring an ex parte motion if the homeowners want to post a lesser amount of money than what is ordinarily required. Now, let's talk about discharging a lien. When a lien is discharged, a lien right is permanently extinguished. This means that the right ceases to exist. A lien may be discharged by one of the following two ways. First, it can be done voluntarily by the lien claimant who would sign something called a release and register that release on title. The other way is by obtaining a court order by a judge or master. Mistakenly registering a release or discharge of a lien where the intent is actually to vacate a lien will be fatal to the lien right. The court has no power to revive the lien or reverse such a mistake. Therefore, it's important for lawyers to be very careful to make sure that all parties understand whether a lien is being vacated or discharged. The difference should be made clear in all of the following situations. Having discussions between lawyers and clients, negotiations with opposing lawyers, when creating registration documents and court orders, when creating settlement documents, often called a minutes of settlement, and when giving instructions to any individual or support staff who creates registration documents. Despite the distinction between vacating and discharging a lien, the electronic registration system in Ontario uses one form to achieve both processes. This form is known as an application to delete construction lien and it requires the user to specify whether the lien is being one discharged voluntarily, two discharged under a court order, or three vacated by court order. In the latter two situations the court order must be attached to the application. So now you know a little bit about the basics of how construction liens work in Ontario. It's important to remember that this video is not intended as legal advice and you should always speak with a qualified lawyer if you have questions about a construction or renovation legal dispute in Ontario. Don't forget to like and follow KPA Lawyers on Facebook and subscribe to KPA Lawyers on YouTube.